and welcome back to the Turtleberg Show. Hey, today's video is actually on how to do a log log graph. And for the example in doing this graph, I'm actually going to be looking at what's known as a simple pendulum, some data I've got here. Somebody has got a pendulum, and it looks like what they've done is this. They've started at 200 centimeters, and they measured the period of that pendulum, the time it took for the pendulum to go over and back as 2.85 then they shorten to 160 145 and they work their whole way down to what looks like 20 down here recording this data and you can look and as the pendulum got shorter it looks like the length and now they've given us this generic equation over here and this generic equation looks like this and they're wanting us to do something they're wanting to us to verify the relationship that exists between what appears to be period and length. So we're actually looking for this, we're actually looking for this power, if you will, that's up here above this, this relationship. So here's the deal. Anytime you want an equation, you can find this power that it's to simply by taking a logarithm of the entire equation. So if you take the log of the entire equation, you have the log of t, and then what's cool is this, when you take the log of L, its power will be the slope of the graph. So check this out, M log of L, and if this C is a constant, we can move it over here, log of C, and that'll be an intercept. So if we're looking, we've got this classic Y equals MX plus B form. So we're going to make a graph with log of T, time, our period on the y-axis, and L, length, on the x-axis. So let's just go ahead and get started by making a graph that fits this criteria. So here's a piece of log-log graph paper, and this is actually two-cycle log-log paper. This has got a log scale in both directions, and so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow this up. I need it where I can see the whole piece of paper at once entire page and I need to go ahead and make my axes for this graph so let's go ahead and do that if you watch the last video maybe then you remember that when you are making axes on a log graph you actually make your axes run on the edge of the graph paper itself which is very unlike most graphs so there I've got my axes made. Uh, now I need to go in and do something. Let's zoom back in so we can see a little bit better. We need to go ahead and like label this thing. And if you've seen any of these videos, you should know everything I'm about to do at this point. Uh, you should have a name and date in the top corner. Uh, I need to have a title up here at the top. I'll call it the simple pendulum. Although somebody doing this lab might say there's nothing simple about it. I'm going to do a graph of the log of period in seconds versus the x-axis is going to be a log of L in meters. All right, so there is that. So now I need to label this other side over here. And this side will be the log of T in seconds. And then down here, the log of L in meters. And now I need to number this chart. Well, let's see. Let's do from left to right. My lengths, my lengths ran from 20 centimeters all the way to 200 centimeters. Those were my lengths. Well, that's going to be easy enough. I need to do a graph in meters, so I'm just going to do this. 0.1. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and then that gets me to 1, 1 1.0. And remember on a log graph, what happens then? 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and so forth on down the line. And you'd get to 10, and if you had a three cycle paper, then they'd go 10, 20, 30, 40 would be your numbering. Uh, going up, my lowest time was 0.9 seconds, so I'm going to do the same thing going up. I'm going to make everything 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1.0, and then I would make each of these 2.0 and 3.0, and that's going to be my times. And then again, they keep going 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 
I had another cycle, you go 10, 20, 30, 40. Remember, there's no zero on the log scale. That's why the paper's made this way. Well, I'm actually ready to go and plot some data at this point. And the pain in the rear end on my data plot is going to be not seeing these numbers. So for the help of me, I'm going to just write the number 1 here and the number 2 there so that I can help get lined up when I'm doing this graph. And let's see, so if that's 1, then that means that that is 1.5 in the middle. So let me see if I can find our data at this point. Our first link, so here we go. My first bit of data is this. 2.85 seconds is 200 centimeters, which would be 2 meters for me. So I can find, there's my 2 meter mark. That's easy enough because there's my length. And now I need to go up and find 2.85. Well, there's 2. And since there's 20 lines here, that makes everything a 0, 5. So 8, 5 would actually be just, let's see, 3 back from the top. So 3 back from the top on that very small scale. And I'll put a dot there. My next data point, let's see was 1.6 meters, 1.6 on my meters, and my time was 2.58. So now let's see if you can help me find that. All right, 1.6, there, I'm going to put my mouse on. That would be 1.6 meters over. So now, and it'll drive you crazy on these little lines. I need to go up to 2.58 seconds. Well, let's see, 2.5 would be right there, boom, right where my crosshair is. I don't know if I can put a dot on that or not. Pretty close. And now what I'm going to continue to do is fill in the data. So you should go through, continue to do my data. And I think my last data point was actually, was, my last data point was actually this. I'm not going to walk through all the data points. You don't need me to do that. Uh, let's see, it was 20 centimeters and 0 0.90 seconds. Well, 20 centimeters would be 0.2 meters, so that would be this mark, and 0.9 seconds would be, and this is what's kind of neat about a log graph, how this data looks. Now let's go ahead, and I'm going to skip forward. Here's a graph that I've already got finished at this point. So let's go ahead and blow this up a little bit where you can see it better. View, zoom, entire page, please. So you notice that here's all my data. Here's that little straggler down here, but it's not a straggler. It makes a nice graph. And I can go ahead and take my ruler now because I've got my data plotted. And like any other graph you've ever watched a video of me make, I'm going to make what's known as a best fit straight line. Please let me undo that computer. I don't want to... Whoa, give me my ruler back. So something I can do with a virtual ruler, I can make it longer. And now I need to get that r ruler lined up perfectly on that data, which is actually hard to do with a virtual ruler. But anyway, do that. Draw your best fit line, which means literally you start on one end of the ruler and draw your line all the way across the page. Bam. Delete. There is my best fit line drawn all the way across the page. And now this, oh, it's going to be horrible. I'm probably going to have to zoom in to 200%. I need to find two graphing points on there. And that's going to be pretty tough on this one. View. Zoom. I'm going to go 200% because this is going to be tough. I've got to find two spots for this. And, hey, you might be looking at this going, hey, uh, Mr. Cole, you kind of missed some of these dots. Hey, that's okay. This line pretty well runs through my data points. So I need to find two spots where this thing is perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and say I think that this is one right here. I think that's a pretty good line. And that's going to be my x1, comma y1. And let's see if I can't figure out where that's at. That is on an X of 0.3, comma, and a Y of what? That's 1, so 1.05, 1.1. Whoa, the amazing disappearing screen. So 1.1. And now I need to go, and I need to find one more. Now, you might have a teacher somewhere might graph it for what I just did. Okay, 
technically that should have had an M after it and that should have an S after it if somebody wanted to be nitpicky like that. But hey, we're doing pretty good here. Find another perfect intersection. And oh my goodness, this is where you need to use like a 0.5 millimeter pencil to do this in real life. Not a gigantic blue line. Uh, okay, I'm going to do my best to pick a spot. Right there. And now that's going to become my X2, Y2. And I need to do the same thing. I need to figure out where in the world that is at. So where in the world am I? So there's one. So that's 1.5. I'm going backwards. That'd be 1.4. 1.35 on my X. Comma. My Y would be, let's see, there's 2. 2.1, 2 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.45 going up maybe. Actually, I'll take it back. It's just 2.40. It's so hard to read these lines. 2.40. And now it's like any other graph you've ever watched me do. You're going to do a rise and a run. So for me, and remember, it's always okay unless you've got a weird teacher just to ride on your graph. Y2 minus Y1, the general equation for a slope, X2 minus X1. But you've got to remember, this is a log-log graph, so I'm going to do one thing. Y2 is going to be the log, the natural log of 2.4, minus the natural log of Y1, which is 1.1, over... The natural log of x2, which is 1.35, minus the natural log of 0.3. And all I got to do is, that's what's so awesome about this graph paper. It lets you put, plug this in a calculator. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can actually get a verdict with this. Uh, where's my Casio FX? So you can tell I've been doing log graphs today. Log of 2.4 close parentheses, minus the natural log, ln of 1.1. If you've got a teacher other than me having you do this, they're a sicko probably. Log of 1. Point, what is that? 3.5. I can't read my own digital handwriting. Minus the log of 0.3. And bam, that's all there is. My answer is 0.5. And that is the N. And so there is the answer to my graph. Uh, your teacher might want you to put in units in here. And if so, that would be seconds over meters, if that was some concern. But really, all we're looking at is that half. Uh, if you remember back, that wanted us to try and find a relationship between period and length in a pendulum. The real equation, we did some generic equation that looked like this, LM. And now we know that that M is actually a half. And the reason why that's a half, it's because the real equation for a pendulum looks like this. 4, excuse me, 2 pi square root of L over G. And so if you take a look, T, L to the 1 half power, if you take a look in there, you can actually see where this half relationship comes in, this radical in there. And that's really all we verified in this lab is that re relationship here, that there is a radical between. That is the relation. Anyway, 13 minutes in, and I think this video is long enough. You've learned how to do a log-log graph. Peace out, deuces, and I love you, America. Later.